Well, it's habit for me. I really want to say good morning, but good afternoon, everyone. We're so glad that you got to be here with us to do this first summer spring. I want to say first annual because this is something I want to do every year if we can. Um, this is such an important night, and we'll talk about it later on, but if you would, for me, can you guys move to the middle? We would love, we did this in our church. I don't know if y'all did this in y'all's. If they weren't all full, we moved everybody to the middle. Um, we want to be able to sing with you this uh, afternoon and just enjoy y'all's fellowship and your company today. So, again, we're glad to have you. If you will, please, let's stand up and let's sing Victory in Jesus together this morning. important, I think, especially for our generations and generations that are coming up, to learn these hymns. And it's not often that we get to sing it in church. We sing a lot of contemporary music, and those are good too, but they were built upon and from these hymns. And that's what's important. And I grew up learning these, singing these, holding a hymnal. It's, it's you know, when I, when I got old enough to hold it, looking over my, my dad's shoulder when I could read it, and, and that's what I remember, joining, singing in the choir in this big old robe and, and learning these hymns, and that's what I go back to. Those are the ones that I remember when I, in times of struggle 
and that's our foundation. We sang about this morning, our firm foundation. It's all about Christ Jesus. And something Pastor Greg said when we were talking about this was these hymns are almost like gospel stories. They're gospel lessons that we're teaching. And that's what we want to proclaim in any song that we sing is the gospel. So it was very important to me and just pressed upon my heart. Gunnar and I talked about it. Gunnar grew up in the same kind of church background that I did, and we just missed the hymns. Um, and so tonight we wanted a special night dedicated just to them. So we thank you guys for coming out and joining us um, and remembering how important these are. So we're going to continue to sing, continue to worship. Feel free to stand, to clap. Um, to come up here if you feel like coming up here and uh, if you need to sit down you can do that too Why? 
greater than snow. There's power in the blood. There's power in the blood. Sin stains are lost in its life-giving flow. There's wonderful power in the blood. Yes, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. And would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood. There's power in the blood. Would you live daily His praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. Yes, there is power, there's power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, there's power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. In the precious blood of the Lamb. We're going to switch it up real quick. This is my family. For those of you who don't know, this is my sister Carly and baby Hayden. And this is, y'all know my husband Gunner. This is Gunner. I love him too. This is my mom, Donna, my brother-in-law, Andrew. And then my dad's right there. He's our big supporter, number one right there. So this is them. And this is what I grew up with my entire life. My mom writes songs, and my dad's always played piano in the house, and my sister learned it, so I guess I had to, too. And I used to tell the Lord, I remember, I had to follow Carly. She's four years older than I am. And so I followed her shadow. You know, my dad was a teacher, so I was Mr. Norton's daughter or Carly's sister. And Carly went through band, and... You know, everybody was musical, and so they expected me to do band, too. And she played the flute and was number one, you know, first chair, everything, all state, all the time. And I was like, there's no way I'm going to live up to that. And so I was like, well, when I get in band, I'm going to do the exact opposite. I'm going to play whatever instrument doesn't look like the flute. <laughs> French horn. Played the French horn. It's the Got round that. one. <laughs> yes, very circle one, you know. Um, and I always told the Lord, I was like, you know, my mom led worship, and loved being a part of it. We always sang up here, did little Norton trios. That's what we called ourselves. And I was like, I don't want to live that life. I don't want to always be under the shadow of my mom, my sister. It's like, I just, you know, I'll sing because you've given me that gift, but I don't want to do it. And then here I am leading worship. And it's so funny how the Lord just has a sense of humor and just lays it upon your heart. Like I have given this to you. I've called you to do it and so it was a beautiful just kind of redemption in my life of coming back through it and seeing what my mom got out of it and understanding now we're all three worship leaders Carly at a Methodist church my mom still helps out at the Baptist church up in Valdosta and I'm here and so lucky and so thankful to be with all of y'all and so we're going to give y'all a little taste of a Norton trio today that we've always done together and I hope that y'all enjoy it, but sing along with us, please. The words will be on screen.
blessing to be with you guys tonight and share these songs. Um, my Jesus, I Love Thee is probably one of the, my favorite songs. Um, there was a trio that used to sing it, and I just love the words to that song, but um, I was telling our choir this morning, you know, we get to say, we sang what a beautiful name it is this morning, the blessed name of Jesus, what a powerful name it is. I reminded the choir what a privilege it is for us. Jesus Christ paid and gave his life so we could speak the name of Jesus and have life. And that's a privilege and an honor. And I don't know about y'all, when sometimes when I go to pray and I don't have the words, I have only one word I can say, and that's Jesus. Just Jesus. And if you know what I mean, if you've been by your bedside and all you could say was that name, it was enough. And it was enough. And I'm so grateful that um, Jesus, that we can speak that name, and that name changes everything. The word said everything has to come under dominion under the name of Jesus. There's nothing that can stand against that name. And I'm, I just pray tonight, um, you guys, in your heart and your lives, if there is something you need that you haven't surrendered to Jesus, tonight is the night to do it. This is a time to let the Lord speak into that area that sometimes we haven't shared with anybody. We Sometimes, I don't know, when I was younger and I, I didn't... Um, I thought as a kid, did you ever do this play, hide and seek, and this, you thought no one could see you if you did this? <laughs> and you thought that cared, that hid you from everybody just by putting your hands in front of your eyes? And sometimes in my life, when the Lord has been speaking to me about something, and I don't want him to, I don't want him to know that I'm hearing him, it's like, I'm trying to do this. And the Lord's like, Donna, I see you, and I know you better than anybody. And I have the way I can speak to you. And just you speak the name of Jesus and surrender that, and I'll take that. Whatever it is, burden, theory, fear, worry, whatever it is, God is here to take that from us. And I'm so grateful for a, for a Savior who went to the cross to give us a privilege to know and walk in fellowship with him.
start passing off the mic. We did this in our church, and Mom reminded me when we were practicing, we loved to give testimonials. And your testimonial doesn't have to be your entire life story. Sometimes that's not appropriate for everybody. Your entire life story doesn't have to be that. It can be one word. What has Jesus been to you? What has Jesus done for you? And we love to do this in our church. Just pass it off and just have a moment of celebrating and praising the Lord through our testimonies. And just giving people the opportunity because sometimes you need to share what Jesus has done for you. Maybe he's just been good. Maybe that's it. Maybe you just need to tell somebody today that Jesus has been good to you. And maybe you need to remind yourself, Jesus has been good to me. And so I loved that. I, I remember sitting there in, a, in our pew, and I was like, oh, I want to, someone give me the mic. I want to talk. This was my time. This is my moment. Um, but I love just hearing what Jesus did in people's lives and sharing that. And sometimes the person next to you might need to hear it. And so I don't want to miss the moment, this moment. So if you have a word, if you have a sentence, if you have a story that you'd like to share, I'd love to just open this up for you. Um, Jesus has been good to me. He has been my redeemer. And that's my word. He's been good. And he's been a redeemer. I've seen him redeem things in my life I thought no one ever could. I thought it wasn't possible. But Jesus did. 
he did. And so I can sing up here, and I can praise him. My Redeemer lives. And I know how special that is because he has redeemed me. So that is my story. That is my testimony. And that's what I get to share with you. So does anybody here have a word, have something they want to say, want to share tonight? I'll leave it open to you. Don't be shy. This is your moment. This is your little inner child's going, pick me. I want to share. Greg, do you want to say a word this morning, this afternoon? Look, yes, I'm getting confused. Yes. Here it is. It's just habit, old yes. habit in here. Okay. So I'm blood bought. I was lost in my sins as a teenager, uh, grappling for meaning in life. Um, I had a, an exterior, but my interior was really flawed. I'm just amazed at how God works in, in lives the way that he worked in mine by sending somebody to me. Um, for all the young people in the room, um, it's important who you choose to hang out with or to date or to know. Um, for me, uh, Becky shared Jesus with me. And she did more than share Jesus. Um, when we went to church, she worshiped like crazy, you know, just worshipped. And that's first glimpse of watching somebody worship. And it became contagious, and I wanted what she had. And uh, what she had was forgiveness. She had peace. She had joy. And guys, that's been a long time ago. And it's still real to me today. And I'm going to tell you, that's that's my story. Because I'm blood-bought not redeemed. That cross that they're singing about, you know, I'm just a crybaby on the front row because, man, without the cross, there would have been no bridge to the salvation that I know. And Jesus provided that. He took my sins and um, he gave me his shirt of righteousness and he calls me the righteous, the righteousness of God. What, what an amazing God that would do that, right? And then he took his own life back up again. He said, nobody takes it from me. I lay it down and take it back up. Because he knew that there would need to be life for everybody that believed in him. And so, and then he said, I promise to come back again. I mean, what a, what a savior. And uh, so I, I can't wait to uh, cast my crown before the Lord. I was reading in Revelations uh, just this morning how the elders around the throne, um, <laughs> they just began, they took their crown. And they just threw it before the Lord and said, you are worthy. And I guess I'm, I'm getting older too. <laughs> I feel ancient. I'm going to be 60 in October, y'all. Y'all know that's old. Look at the teenager. Our pastor is really old. We need a replacement. Um, but truly, the journey, I'm, I'm getting closer to this place that they're singing about. And it's never been more real. Now, I'm going to tell you that I came because Paige looked at me and, and said, Pastor, and I, I, I'm i never going to turn down the opportunity. We're, we're made overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and a word of testimony. But the reason that I came was to get it started. <laughs> so I'm here to help somebody else come and just, Paige said, it may be just one word or one sentence where you share what God done. This is a small crowd tonight, but it's an intimate crowd. And there's somebody else that will join me right now just with that that testimony and you say well I don't know if I can uh, well I want to tell you something get used to it because God God needs you to be a voice for him there could be somebody in this room and it's being recorded so this is going to be rebroadcast it could be somebody else watching that needs to hear what you have to say so as your pastor I'm going to call you up just don't even think about it just jump up right now and come just come I know there's one Whoever you are, come on. I'm right here with you. Amen. My brother Blake. Yes, sir. All right, I'll tell you all a little bit. 
talking about my life. I grew up in church at Free Baptist. For years, I was in the in the children's ministry all the way up through youth, and I stayed in church all the time. But once I got older, <clears throat> to the to the youth and the crowd here, once I got to that that age when I got into out of high school, got into college, I kind of separated a little bit, and I kind of got caught up in the world, followed the world, straight away from church. I stayed away for a while, and <clears throat> what I want to say is. I think it's probably been a couple months, about a year ago, through some of Pastor Greg's sermons, we kind of got back into I Pray So That series. And during that, I was I, I was back in church, but I was still lukewarm. I was not I was not in it. I wasn't reading near as much as I should. I wasn't praying near as much as I should. I was letting the things of the world kind of just take over and keep me just blinded and not really focusing on God that much. So during that I Pray So That series, I started focusing on just God what is your will there's got to be something for my life and I don't know what that is right now but I just and just over and over for a month or so I just kept asking God just just show me a sign what is it that you want that you have for me and there was one night when I was sitting there praying a vision come to me and I still can picture it I drew it out one day for my wife to show her and it was it was there was an object in the middle it was kind of a triangle. It was dark on the edges, and there was light, and it was kind of dim around it. And it was this vision was playing in my mind as I was sitting there praying. And all of a sudden, I didn't know what the object was in the middle, but all of a sudden it come up, and what it was was somebody down praying on their knees. Wow. And when I seen that person, then the light kind of expanded back, and that darkness went away as it was going back. And I was sitting there thinking, I said, what does this vision mean? And what it meant is I needed to be right here. I needed to come down here. I needed to give it back to God. I needed to go back and seek his strength, everything that he had for me. And at that moment, everything changed. I believe that was one Sunday within about a, probably a month. You were, we was at the altar call, and you said, guys, I need you down here. And that was the moment I knew I needed to come back down here. And at that moment then, things changed for me, and I started understanding how to interpret, and the Lord speaking to me and giving me different speaking through songs, just words, just a lot of things that started coming back to me and giving me more reason to study and dig in a little more and do. So I just want to say, don't never get caught. If you're in a lukewarm state, dig in, study, stay in prayer. Dig. He's going to speak to you. Sometimes it might take a little while, but just focus on God. Give everything to Him, and He will speak to you, and He will lead your life, and just, just focus on that. And He's done so much for me. It changed the things I used to take that were important every day. I don't even look at it anymore. I mean, it's just a completely, I told Pastor Greg one day when we were talking, I think I told him about a year ago, he said, what, what can you, what do you see yourself doing? I was like, Greg, I, I'm not a speaker. I don't do good in front of crowds. I don't, that's not me. And it wasn't a little while, a couple months later, he said, I want you to lead the band of brothers. I was like, that's not, <laughs> that's completely different from what I would have said, yeah, I'll do, but I knew I needed to say, yes, that's something that I needed to do in doing that, that helps me. It keeps me studying. It keeps me looking at the material to share with the guys. It keeps me focused on God at all times. So that's one thing that, and you knew that somehow, that that's what I needed to be doing. And I thank you for that. Thank you. And Blake's amazing. When he, he, uh, he speaks uh, from a lot of inspiration and I try to share, I'm like, man, you need to write your sermon and be ready, buddy, because the things that he, he writes, I know, comes from the Holy Spirit. And he's a great hubby, and he's a great daddy. I want to say that. Uh, somebody else? Is that okay? Am, am I doing good? I mean, you all know I can get them, right? We, we bring them down to you, too. He can walk if y'all just want to say one word. That's what we do. Just one word, and, and it may be the beginning. Like like Brother Blake said, he didn't, he didn't think that he could, but once he did. He knew that it really wasn't about him. It's about glorifying Jesus Christ. And that's what he just did, and that's what he's going to continue to do. So why don't you take that first step? And this is what I wish people would get today because when I got saved, I mean, man, you just dove in. <laughs> you know, the people were always trying to get you to that place where you would open your mouth. And, guys, I want to tell you, whether you're giving God praise or sharing a testimony or in worship, just try opening your mouth and being vocal. And something tangibly happens. So. 
Uh, I think we got time for another one. I want to just, anybody, just want to share like, hey, God help me through this. And I just want to, maybe that's you. Maybe there's something that other people are going through that you're pretty acquainted with in this day and age. And you just want to say, this is what God did for me. Somebody want to talk about it. This is the time. Come on. We're, we, we're making good time. So, come on up. One more. The Spirit says one more. Whoever you are. Somebody needs to hear how amazing God is. Amen. Come on, Brother Donnie. Yeah. He just needed that little nudge from the pastor. No, he didn't. I mean, it, it was ticking down. I could, I could see it. You know what payback is, don't you? <laughs> Go and fish it. Well, I grew up a primitive Baptist. And I was told as a young person there was nothing you could do uh, to be saved. That either you were saved or you're not, and it would be revealed to you one day. So when I got old enough, I said, well, if I can't do anything about it, I'll go fishing. So I did. And for years and years, I fished. And on Sunday. And one day, my wife brought this couple home. She was a nurse at the nursing home out there. I did not like preachers. And he was a preacher. But he never preached to me. He led me to the Lord by loving me and I remember they had there's a group in Swainsboro where I was born and raised it uh, was called the One Way In there was a church there named Hall, uh, Hillcrest and they were having a revival and they had a, a, a big youth group and they formed them a group One Way In One Way Into Heaven and they had a at the uh, high school auditorium they had a movie about the rapture. When Max called me, he said, I want you to go to the movies with me. I said, oh, really? Pastor, don't go to movies? I said, I'm going to carry you. I said, man, that's cool. So he came by, didn't know we was going to the high school. We went around through town right by the movie, and I said, you missed your turn. He said, no, I didn't. Went right on to the high school. That thing scared me to death. It was on a Saturday night. Sunday morning, I drove over to Garfield, which has a caution light to his church and I said I got to settle this thing and right there in his office he led me to the Lord and now Max is uh, 75 years old and he's still doing evangelist work and uh, strengthening that which remains is what he's doing but anyway I've slipped and slid over the years and uh, I've been strong and I've been weak and uh, but Jesus is always there He's so faithful. Uh, I came by two months ago. Greg and I spent probably an hour in his office talking. And I can only say one thing, but God. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here. I can promise you. And then six years ago, I met this sweet little lady. We were the first one to get married right here in this church. We hold a record. <laughs> what a blessing she's been. Absolutely. I could go on, but I won't. But uh, I'll get you back. <laughs> but thank y'all for listening. I think we've got two more songs to conclude. So if you guys will, please stand up and let's sing these two together. Oh, 
We're going to close out with amazing grace. Everyone should know this one, so let's sing it loud, and then you guys can be dismissed. Thank you again for coming and for singing the hymns with us and for making this night what it is. We're so thankful to share it with you, and we hope that it's blessed your heart. So, dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you. God, we thank you for this night. What a beautiful remembrance and reminder it is, God, to worship you through these hymns. God, to sing about your gratefulness. God, you are so good. You are so faithful. God, we just lift you high in this place, and we pray, God, that these words, these songs that we've sung, God, have just been honoring to you. God, that they've brought you glory in some capacity. God, we just thank you that you bend an ear towards us to listen. God, you are so worthy of all the praise, and all we want to do is just worship you. God, so tonight our hearts are reminded of your love for us. God, you're, you paid it all on the cross. God, you do have amazing grace and mercy for us. And you are so faithful. God, even when we stray, as our testimonies tonight, we've all strayed at some point. God, but you have been constant. You have been faithful. You are a firm foundation. God, so write these words, these songs in our hearts so that we can call them to mind when troubles come our way, when storms blow in. God, help us to remain steadfast and firm upon you, upon our solid rock, our firm foundation. God, we praise you. It's in your holy and precious name that we do this. 
You deserve all of the honor, all of the glory, all of the praise. God, you are so worthy of it all. We love you and we thank you. It's in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen.